Welcome to a Monday night. Um, this is a bit of an update from the last video where I was working on this, the uh, thread router um, from ESP. It turns out I was using the wrong code base all along. So when you do these things, apparently there is an old code base and a new code base. So one was called the Zigbee SDK and the other one was called the ESP thread BR. Now, that's the reason I was stuck in version 5.1. And even though I, on the VM side, I got it working once, I never got it working again. It was real flaky. So, if we go over here to our uh, Visual Studio Code, and what I want to do is go over to the welcome screen. I'll get back to the what's showing on the screen in a sec. So, if we go to show examples, and we say 531 and we go zig in here like this so let's say we take the zig gate this whole block is old out of date it just won't work properly um when you go up to here it says esp zigbee sdk docs and repo wrong docs wrong repo so just ignore this whole section you actually have to do it differently Okay, so uh, we don't have a web browser yet. Just a sec, give me a sec here. Uh, properties, and let me find the web browser again. There we go. So on on the is it the right one? Nope, wrong one. Let's try this again. I gave you the wrong browser. I see built and run ESP installing Blinka, KDE OBS, Taj Michelle. Those are Visual Studio Code. There it is. So this site here, you can see right here, ESP Thread BR is the primary instructions for using it with 531 sorry let's try it down here 531 uh thing so you can see right here okay so this particular one is it looks like they rebuilt this thing completely right and now it's also falls under the umbrella of the open thread project so that's probably one of the reasons so what you're going to do is um, I created a subdirectory to hold all this stuff. And let me find my folder viewer. So I created um, under my project a Zigbee 531 and I get pulled the ESP thread BR GitHub. That's the first part where they want you to do on this. So the next part they want you to do is, uh, well, technically they want you to get the ESP IDF Git. Now, if you're not using Visual Studio Code, you'll have to do this step. But if you're already using Visual Studio Code, and I am, and I have ESP IDF 531 installed, I don't need to do this front block here. This, this, install, export, blah, because it's already done for me. Um, what I need to do is build the first component they talk about. So they have you actually get this BR Git, but we won't touch it just yet. They want us to build the RCP image first. And apparently now what happens, you don't flash this image to the H3 chip. You let the gateways uh, controller on the other ESP chip do the flashing for you, and it will do that. But we still have to build it. Now that now exists, and let me get back to the folder view here. If you go here and you go into your ESP directory where they install everything, there's our 531. You go into it, you go into examples, you scroll down a little bit, there's open thread, the new stuff. And in it is OTRCP, what they want you to build. So what I did with that is I opened one uh, Visual Studio Code window here and I built it here, but I did not flash it, but I did monitor it 
after the first gateway part did it its job and actually flashed the firmware for me. So it's going to dig into that directory based off the path of the ESP IDF that you're using, and it will find that in there. So I can open a second Visual Studio Code window, and this time in it, I did not use the examples. Instead, I went and opened that Git repository the basic thread router repository is sitting in this thing is sitting inside the example directory so if you go here and you look back at um, esp idf projects zigbee that examples there it is right there basic thread border router i opened that in studio and this is the one i actually built flashed and then monitor. And in doing so, you get this effect up here. Uh, I have to scroll a little bit. Maybe we'll find it again. There. See, it's it does a flashing RCP update. It actually flashed everything to the other ESP chip for us. And then when it was all done, it started up. And you can actually see this here. Connects to the Wi-Fi, blah, blah, blah. Um, you have to put your Wi-Fi credentials inside of the ASP. So I'm not going to show you that, but there is a section, oops, there is a section in there um, dealing with that. And there's also a prompt in there that you could do it from standard in. But I didn't try that out. I just put it in the thing. So once I did that, it connected, it got an IP number and everything, and it started up the open thread router. Um, I wasn't worried about these or the reds because I was fiddling around between the two of them, just syncing them up in the monitor. And you go along, blah, 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 get an IP address. And now it's waiting. You can see this right here. It's actually waiting for Zigbee traffic, right? Now, my next stage um, is to come up with a, <laughs> a Zigbee device or... Um, figure out how you tie it to, well, they say you can tie it to Apple Home, you can tie it to Google Home, that sort of thing. I do have a, a Google Home set up. I have to see if I can actually add that into there. Right? Now, the other thing to note um, on this, this device here, Ethernet, you can either use the Wi-Fi on here, or you can use this, but you can't use both so in the instructions um if we scroll down configure blah 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 wi-fi right here so you're going to do either wi-fi based thread router or ethernet based thread router and that's done inside the um uh, menu config inside the esp chip so you would actually open up the ESP config, that's that wrench down here in Visual Studio. And I just have to make sure I'm in the right one because don't forget, you're looking at two ESPs here. Right? Whoops. Uh, good thing I wasn't showing you that. So um, let's get that rid of that. So you have to find um, the auto start. There's an example thing in here. Um, they tell you in the instructions how to find it in here. So you're going to turn on the auto start and then you're going to add your Wi-Fi credentials. If you turn on the ETH interface, which they tell you how to do also in here, then the Wi-Fi gets disabled. It doesn't do it through that. Okay. Um, we don't need examples and we don't need the configurator anymore. And when you save all the configuration out, they show up here these text files. So it uses it to the layout when it writes the code and builds everything. Um, so now this is standing as the router right now between my ne uh, test network and this board. Now I suspect what I have to do with the Google Home is I have to also connect it to the test network. I think, but I'm not 100% sure how you tie the two sets together yet. And then, of course, the second big piece for this all is I need 
well, I need a, uh, a Zigbee device. Now, some of the websites do talk about this, and it could be as simple as taking um, something like this, which is um, a C6, I think it is. This is an ESP C6. Or I can get the more generic one. Uh, I have them over there, the boards. Um, I don't think I have an Adafruit Feather with a C6. I only have... Um, that's a Feather ESCS2. That's another Feather... It's an S3, generic S3. Let's see what we have here. Uh, this guy here. This one is um, um, C's. It's another feather, 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 feather. Uh, feather, feather, feather. Might not be in this bin. No, I think these are all the classical ones. I don't think I have one in here that's a C6. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I don't. Not in that one. Let's see. Uh, what else do we have here? Feather hats. Here's one. No, that's an S2. Not from what I actually have one. These are uh, S3s. There's Here, what about this one? No, these are the older ones, I'm pretty sure. I don't know. This one might. No, this is another S3. Yeah, no, not these guys. I do have them somewhere. I have like four C6s or something like that. I was doing something with them, but I can't find it. I'm going to have to do some more labeling here. I don't think we need one. What do we have here? No, I have to root out or root one out. But I think I can do it if I find one of my C6s and turn it into uh, a thing. But I have to go find them. I put them away very carefully and now I can't find them. <laughs> the only one I have out is uh, this guy. And I'm pretty sure this is either C3 or C6. Problem is I can't read this one. Um... C3. Yeah, so this is a C3. So in theory, this could be turned into a Zigbee device. I don't know how I would do it, but uh, at least yet. So put it back on its board here. That's the next stage is to either tie it to, also tie it to the home router and or tie it to... Uh, a Zigbee device. Now, in theory, um, you can get the H2 or whatever, this guy here, 
which is technically a device already in this thing as a Zigbee device, because that's how they, they this connects to your network and this guy connects to the Zigbee systems, right? So we just need more Zigbee stuff. Um, and it doesn't do it over, um, well, it's a Zigbee protocol, so it's doing it something different, so. That's where I stand so far in a day uh, of working on this. So I thought I'd give this update on where I was because apparently I kind of screwed up yes, uh, yesterday on the video a little bit. So, but hey, that's the whole point of this is to make mistakes and then figure it out. So uh, next one, I'll maybe have a uh, find my C6s and uh, see how I go about making a, um, I don't know, a pseudo. You're supposed to be able to send commands to this and stuff. And I have to figure the command line stuff for, for out too. So it's kind of like MQTT where you send stuff to and they all participate in the node server, yada, yada, yada. So I got to figure that all out. So I hope this will help people out. This is a nice real short video for this. Now at what stage I am. So we'll see you next time when I figure out a Zigbee device.